to our service for Friday morning. We will begin by listening to our opening hymn. reading from the book of Amos. Hear this, you that trample on the needy and bring to ruin the poor of the land, saying, when will the new moon be over so that we may sell grain, and the Sabbath so that we may offer wheat for sale? We will make the ephah small and the shekel great, and practice deceit with false balances, buying the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals, and selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together the words of Psalm 113. Hallelujah. Give praise, you servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be blessed from this time forth forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its going down, let the name of the Lord be praised. The Lord is high above all nations, and his glory is above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who sits enthroned on high, but stoops to behold the heavens and the earth? He takes up the weak out of the dust and lifts up the poor from the ashes. He sets them with princes, with the princes of his people. He makes the woman of a childless house to be a joyful mother of children. The 
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, There was a rich man who had a, ma a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you, giving me an accounting of your management, because you cannot be, a man be my manager any longer? Then the manager said to himself, What will I do? Now that my master is taking the position away from me, I'm not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to go and beg. I've decided what to do, that when I am dismissed as manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, How much do you owe my master? He answered, A hundred jugs of olive oil. He said to him, Take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it fifty. Then he asked another, How much do you owe? He replied, A hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, Take your bill, and make it eighty. And his master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted so shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, Make friends for yourself by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much, and whoever is dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust you to the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. In the name of one God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, I have no idea what to do with this gospel. <laughs> this is a very confusing gospel. Just following the action is difficult. But beyond that, what is the meaning of this parable? It's Jesus praising the manager for being dishonest, for being shrewd? Are there things that we need to know about the economic way of dealing, the context of the, this point in time to understand this parable? Some of the commentators that I read to prepare to preach this morning had interesting things to say about the possible business practices of the time. There was a conjecture that what the manager has done in order to ingratiate himself to the owner's clients, who were much well, farther, much well off than he was, was to decrease the amount that they owned by his commission. This would lead to a win-win-win. Other commentators suggested that this dishonest manager eliminated the interest owed on the bills, which would be in line with Jewish tradition because it was illegal to charge interest. But if these things were true, why is it called the dishonest manager rather than the moral and upstanding one who is doing the right thing? The interpretation that I found that was the most interesting, and it really is kind of one-off, but it's the one I'm going to go with, is that Jesus is being sarcastic. He's being sarcastic and saying, eh, here's a way to make friends. Why don't you find yourself by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it's gone, they may welcome you into their eternal home. Yeah, right. What makes this work for me is the inconsistency between the telling of the tale about the dishonest manager and Jesus' interpretation of the tale. On the one hand, the manager is praised for being shrewd, but then Jesus turns it 180 degrees and says, whoever ever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much, and whoever is dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. There is our human economy, 
which is built on a series of quid pro quos that by its very nature favors the wealthy. And there's God's economy that Jesus is inviting us to embrace that has a prefer preferential option for the poor, that bends the arc of human history towards justice. There is the economy that says, we will put so much pressure on bankers to hit their goals that they are shrewd and set up false accounts that customers know nothing about. That same economy leads CEOs to make decisions to raise the price of, say, an EpiPen by 500% and then give themselves a giant bonus. And then there's God's economy that is about freeing the captives, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, and all without counting the cost. As disciples of Jesus, we are being asked to make a choice. Which economy are you in for? I have a show that I love to watch that I get teased about by the younger chaplains. I watch Blue Bloods on CBS. I don't think they even know what network television is, some of my younger chaplains. Uh, but Tom Selleck plays the grandfather and he, his granddaughter asked to meet him uh, to because she has an issue that she's struggling with. As the, conver as the conversation is going on, she's very distracted by her phone. Uh, you've probably never seen this behavior with kids. <clears throat> she keeps looking at it, and, be and it begins to really aggravate gr the grandfather, played by Selleck. He asks her to stop, and she explains that, well, she might be getting a very important call. And he lays out his boundaries by telling her, you have to choose. You have to choose if having this conversation with him is what you want, or do you want to be absorbed by your phone? This may seem like a small thing, but it really isn't. Being present to the person you are with, whom you ask to see, or focusing on your phone, and the things outside of the time and space you are in with the person sitting there right with you is a big deal. And that I think it, that I think is the essence of the gospel this morning. Whoever is faithful in a little thing, like not checking your phone constantly, will be faithful in much bigger things. What does it look like for you to be faithful in little things? Of course, some people don't believe that small things can make much of a difference. I hear all the time these days, from some environmental folks that, well, there's really nothing you can do. I don't believe that. I think every little thing makes a difference. There's a quote from the Dalai Lama I love that makes the point. If you think that you are too small to make a difference, try sleeping in a room with a mosquito. <laughs> small things, small gestures done with love make all the difference. I have a group of friends, I'll actually be meeting with them again tonight, a friends and faith group we meet once a month, and um, my friend Patricia was telling a story about a small thing that she hadn't thought about, that her son was watching her do brush her teeth, and she said, Mom, why do you leave the water running the entire time you're brushing your teeth? So she changed, and she uses that time to maybe connect to the earth and keeps in mind those around the, the globe that do not have potable water. Here at Episcopal Homes, little things make the big difference every day. Saying hello to people in the hallway, giving a big smile, <laughs> uh, being there for friends in this community who may be going through difficult times and listening to them with love and care. We are challenged to be mosquitoes for good, buzzing about doing small things for one another and in the process, bringing God's love to one another. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, 
true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she is worshipped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us give thanks to God, our mother and father, for all the gifts so freely given to us. For the beauty and wonder of your creation in earth and sky and sea, Lord, we thank you. For all that is gracious in the lives of women and men that reveals the image of Christ to us, Lord, we thank you. For daily, our daily food and drink, our homes and families and friends, the staff and volunteers here at Episcopal Homes. Lord, we thank you. For minds to think and remember, hearts to love and ways to be kind to one another. Lord, we thank you. For strength and courage to accept growing weakness and patience and suffering. Lord, we thank you. For all whose lives are closely linked with ours. For those in any need or trouble. For the communion of saints in all times and places. For all the departed we have loved. Lord, we thank you. Above all, we give you thanks for the great mercies and promises given to us in Christ Jesus our Lord. To him be praise and glory with you, O Father, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share a sign of peace with one another. announcement today. Um, there is a new uh, offerings, which is the Spiritual Life newsletter. Hopefully you've seen that around or had one delivered to your room. Um, and in there it's all about the animals of Episcopal homes and how they bless us. And 
we do an annual blessing of the animals, which will be on Tuesday, October 4th, in the courtyard um, out over at the Welcome Center. So uh, keep that in mind if you're interested in seeing all the cats and dogs and newts or whatever get brought for blessing. So let us walk in love as Christ loved us and made himself a sacrifice and an offering to God. to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourselves. And when you had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you for the and for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you do this, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. 
Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our brother Jesus has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Life is short, and we haven't much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be quick to love, make haste to be kind, and may the blessing of God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.
Thanks be to God. God.